Hello everyone, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. In today's video, we are going to discuss about basic concepts of Azure SNPs Analytics. This simply means what are all those terms and terminologies that you need to know before starting working on Azure SNPs Analytics. These are going to help you to understand the basic concepts while working on Azure SNPs Analytics. So without further ado, Let's get started. The very first concept is about the SNPs workspace. What is it? Well, a SNPs workspace is a securable collaboration boundary for doing cloud-based enterprise analytics in Azure. A workspace is deployed in a specific region and has an associated Azure Data Lake storage and to account and file system. A workspace is under a resource group. A workspace allows you to perform analytics with SQL and Apache Spark. Resources available for SQL and Apache Spark are organized into SQL and Spark pools. That simply means Whatever you need to do in Azure SNPs Analytics, whether your storage account, your pipelines, or any of the linked services, everything you can unify into one workspace. And one workspace is going to fall under a resource group. If you have any more question about this, you can ask me in the comment section. Next, we are going to talk about the linked services. Linked services are nothing but your connection strings. You know that whenever you need to get a data from a source, then definitely you need to have the address of that source. And then, like we used to do in ETL, that means, for example, in SSIS or any other ETL tool, you need to establish a connection between the source and the destination or the staging area. So over there, you need to create a connection string that can be your database address, your file address, or anything else. So that's what is your linked services. A workspace can contain any number of linked services. Essentially, connection strings that define the connection information needed for the workspace to connect to external resources. Next, we are going to talk about SNPs SQL. Well, we all know that in order to connect with your data in a database or to explore the data over there, you need structured query language so that you can interact with the database. Similarly, SNPs SQL is the ability to do transact SQL based analytics in SNPs workspace. SNPs SQL has two consumption models. Either you can buy a dedicated one or you can go for the serverless one. For the dedicated model, you use dedicated SQL pools. That means you have already predefined dedicated units over there. Those cannot change automatically. But if you want something like, for example, you are working on production and you can have sometimes sudden peaks into the data usage. So then in that case, you can go for the serverless and that can automatically be adjusted. To use Apache Spark's analytics, create and use serverless Apache Spark pools in your Synapse workspace. When you start using a Spark pool, then the SNPs workspaces create a Spark session to handle the resources associated with that particular session. Mainly, there are two ways within SNPs analytics to use Spark. The one can be your Spark notebooks, which you can use to do your data science and engineering, like use of Scala, PySpark, C Sharp, or Spark SQL. Another option over here can be the Spark job definitions, which you can use for running bad Spark jobs using JAR files. Now, there's another very important concept over here, which is the pipelines. So now the next concept is pipelines. If you have worked on Azure Data Factory, then I'm sure you already aware about what are the pipelines. However, if you are new over here, then the same thing which you can do into Azure Data Factory, you can do the same in SNPs Analytics as well. And here, pipelines is the, exactly the same concept. Pipelines are how Azure SNPs provides data integration. That means how you can do your ELT or ELTL operation 
allowing you to move data between services and orchestrate activities. Over here, there are the certain terms that you should remember or you should be familiar with. For example, a pipeline. A pipeline are logical group of activities that performs a task together. That means whether you are copying data, moving data, running any of your SQL scripts, store procedures, or you are mentioning your job triggers, etc. Everything you can orchestrate within a pipeline. Second comes your activities. Activities defines actions within a pipeline to perform on data such as your copying data, running of any notebook, or running any SQL script, or maybe something else, like the operations that you are performing on your data. Then comes the data flow. Data flows are specific kind of activity that provide a no-code experience for doing data transformation that uses Synapse Spark under the covers. Then it comes to the trigger. So definitely when you create a pipeline, you want to trigger it at a certain time or at a particular schedule. So trigger executes a pipeline. It can be run manually or automatically, like on a particular schedule, tumbling window, or email based. Then the lastly is the integration data set. It's a named view of data that simply points or reference the data to be used in an activity as an input and output. It belongs to a linked service. Now we are going to explore the data explorer, which is in preview at the time of publishing this video. This is a very important tool and in my last video already I described briefly about it. So I'm not gonna go in too much detail over here. I'll provide you again link in the description section. If you want to explore it more, you can go over there. Here, you would find that you can use Data Explorer pools, which are dedicated clusters that includes two or more compute nodes with local SSD storage or hot cache for optimized query performance and multiple blob storage that is the cold storage for persistence. Then there is a Data Explorer database, which are hosted on Data Explorer pools and logical entities made up of collection of tables and other database objects. Then there are tables. Tables are database objects that contain data that is organized using a traditional relational data model. And lastly, the external table. So in case of external table, these are the tables that reference the storage or SQL data source outside the Data Explorer database. Similar to tables, an external table has a well-defined schema. Unlike Data Explorer tables, where data is ingested into Data Explorer pools, external tables operate on a data stored and managed outside the pools. So this is another way to get the data outside the Data Explorer pools. Now question comes, what comes next? Well, in our next video, I am going to create a Snips workspace and we will go through each and every step over there. We will determine what is where, that means where you can do the configuration, where is your pipelines, where is your database, etc. So please stay tuned. See you in the next video.